following black body spectrum online simulation is to be used with the black body radiation data collection and processing activity that is found on the student Google site black body radiation page. The purpose of this activity is to look at the relationship between intensity on the y-axis of this graph and temperature which can be manually decreased and increased showing an increase and decrease in temperature in the thermometer. The second procedure uh, for this data collection and processing activity is then to manipulate the relationship between the temperature and the intensity and to look at something called or to, to try and create something or develop something called the Stefan Boltzmann's constant. The second part of the data collection and processing process is explained on the black body radiation instruction sheet which can be found attached to the student Google site. A black body is a theoretical object that is both a perfect absorber of all frequencies and a perfect emitter of all frequencies. The graph that is being displayed on this simulation shows how at different temperatures energy is distributed within the spectrum of radiation from a black body emitter. So this is showing how frequencies are distributed when a black body is emitting these frequencies. If we decrease the temperature we see two things happen within this simulation. The first thing we can see happening is that if we look at the BGR and this star-like shape in the center of the simulation we can see that they go very very dim and they go into the red color. At very very low temperatures you can see that they almost go no color at all and black. As I start to increase the temperature you can see that we go past the oven mark of the thermometer, we go to the light bulb mark of the thermometer and we start to get the green, blue and red colors and the sun is looking more of an orange color. As we go even higher and we go up to like a sun-like property, the sun-like type of the thermometer, we can see that we start to get almost like a whitish blue color. And then as we start to even increase and go past the thermometer, you can see that we start to get up to very, very blue colors. At the same time, you can see that the graph is showing um, the relationship between intensity and wavelength. For this data collection and processing activity, we're not going to worry about the wavelength we're only going to look at the intensity which is the y-axis of this graph. However, just to look at the graph for a moment you can see that at low temperatures at the peak of the graph or the majority of the frequencies are first of all moved towards the right towards the red side of the um, visible spectrum and that the intensity is very very low. As we start to increase the temperature you can see that the peak of this graph moves to the left. As it moves to the left it's moving through the visible spectrum towards the blue and the violet side and is also increasing in intensity. And this graph is basically the typical representation of a black body emitter. For more information on this you'll need to spend some time with your teacher, who, your physics teacher, who will explain the shape of this graph to you in more detail than I can on this video. For the purpose of this activity, or for the purpose of the data collection and processing activity, we're going to control the temperature and we're going to measure the intensity. Controlling the temperature in this activity is, is quite difficult and the slider is not that sensitive. So what we can start to do is we can actually start to manually type in our temperatures. So I'm going to start off with a temperature of 3000 Kelvin. And we're going to use 3000 Kelvin as our starting temperature because this is the point where we can actually just start to see the peak rise. Anything less than 3000, and I'm just going to move the slider down, and you can see that it starts to become almost flat, almost horizontal. So we're going to say 3000 is our starting point. This again is given in the instruction sheet. Now we need to measure intensity. We can't directly measure intensity at the moment because there's no scale, but what we can do is we can show the ruler. What we're going to do to start off with is we're going to measure the height of the peak using the ruler. So we're going to set the ruler up to the origin like this, and we're going to measure 
the height of the peak or the, the highest point of the peak using the ruler. You can see that the ruler goes to a full scale of 30 centimeters and is divided into individual centimeters. And at the moment for 3000 Kelvin, I'd say that's around about maybe one centimeter. You need to record the 3000 with suitable error and you also need to record you also need to record the height of the peak with suitable error. We're then going to go up in steps. And we're going to go in steps of 250 Kelvin. So we're going to go next one 3250 and we're going to see the peak. Again, we're going to move the ruler to a certain point and then we're going to take a suitable measurement of the peak. Our maximum temperature we're going to use is 6,000. This is because this is the point where we actually, 6,000 will be the point where we actually start to go past the y-axis. And this, at the moment, we can see now is clearly about 100 megawatts per meter squared. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to use the ruler. And with the ruler, we're going to place this on. And I'm going to take a measurement. And that looks more like about. 29 centimeters. Again, we're going to record the temperature with suitable error, and we're going to record the um, height of the peak with suitable error. If we have a full scale deflection of 100 megawatts per meter squared, and we have uh, 100 megawatts per meter squared is 29 centimeters, that means that um, one megawatt is approximately, uh, sorry, one centimeter is approximately 3.5 megawatts per meter squared. Um, again, if you look at the instruction sheet, you'll be able to the the instruction sheet will explain these uh, will explain this to you a lot more clearly than I have just now. And that's basically the, the the principle of this simulation. We're taking height measurements that we then later convert to intensity measurements and record those against temperature values. We could start to measure wavelengths and take measure wavelengths and look at what happens with temperature and wavelength, or we could start to look at intensity and wavelength. But again, those will be things that your teacher will can do once you've done this DCP activity. This DCP activity is solely responsible for intensity and temperature. All you need to do now is go back uh, to the um, black body radiation page of the student Google site, download the instruction sheet read the instruction sheet, and then follow the instructions to complete this DCP activity. Thank you very much.